mentors from around the African continent and the world. So can we give a big hand to our mentors? And, in and can the mentors stand up, please? Wow. Did you know that there was a mentor from the Africa Development Bank and she's been mentoring, um, mentoring entrepreneurs from Seychelles and from Mozambique? We are deeply, deeply grateful. So thank you. I, you know, just to give you a backstory, um, today, as we all know, is Mr. Alumilu's birthday. And, and over the last five years since I've known him, as I've said, we watched him getting older and wiser. And every year, instead of us, I never have to give him a present. Instead of us giving him a present, he gives 1,000 entrepreneurs from across the African continent the gift of the Tony Lumilu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. So let's give it up for Mr. Lumilu. When I met him in April 2014, he shared his vision. It's a crazy good vision. I want to invest $100 million in 10, empowering 10,000 entrepreneurs over the next 10 years across 54 African countries. I looked at him and said, don't you think we should just do it in Nigeria first? Um, but not what I was to discover. Um, that he is not just a Nigerian, he is an African, he is a Pan-Africanist. So what attracted me to leave my comfort zone and my dear husband, who is here today with us, um, London in 2014, there were really three things. One was his economic philosophy of Afri-capitalism. Here is a man who said, yes, the government can do so much, but it is the private sector, the African private sector, who must be unleashed to develop Africa economically and socially. And that is the philosophy that underpins everything that the foundation is about. So everybody, be an African Afri capitalist and read about and read his extraordinary paper that he presented in 2013 to the UN General Assembly. He was taking a different message of to the outside world saying, look at Africa, deal with Africa, engage with Africa from a totally different perspective. Invest in African um, business leaders. He also wanted, and these are the two words that really struck a chord with me, institutionalize luck and democratize opportunity. By selecting entrepreneurs who are zero to three year old businesses, so it's your idea, and if you've got a business which is under three years old, he is democratizing opportunity. He himself talks about the extraordinary mentorship and the opportunities that he received at a very young age. And his mentor, his guru, is with us, Mr. Banigo. Thank you very much for mentoring this extraordinary man. So his vision has been about how can I institutionalize that luck for Africans across the African continent. So on the 1st of December, he announced a $100 million commitment, 10 years, 54 countries, empowering 10,000 um, African entrepreneurs. And that took, had confidence in me to then help him operationalize that extraordinary vision. And I brought my own skills and experiences as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, um, working in the arts and working in film and television production to really take his vision and then give it a shape and structure. The emergence of that was the seven pillars of the entrepreneurship program. The alumni, the mentors, you know exactly what that is. The 12-week enterprise toolkit, the online mentoring that you receive and offline, the online resource library, the information that entrepreneurs need in order to build their businesses, 
the extraordinary meetups, and I've, I've had the privilege of traveling across the African continent with Mr. Olumalu and alone, and organizing meetups with our alumni. The Entrepreneurship Forum is started as a boot camp, guys, where we were literally going to bring a thousand entrepreneurs. It's now become the destination event for the African continent on entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Um, because we know entrepreneurs don't just dwell in isolation. And the final seventh pillar is the seed capital. So in, 28, seven, in, in December 2014, we announced to the world the seven pillars of the Tony Inumlu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. An authentic, innovative, credible, homegrown, and game-changing program that will bring economic transformation in Africa from the ground up. And our entrepreneurs are delivering precisely that. People ask us always, so what's been the impact? The impact is that 4,470 entrepreneurs from those 54 countries have been provided with the training, the mentoring, the seed capital. But most important of all, we all believe as entrepreneurs, we're the only ones who are going through this extraordinary challenge as an entrepreneur. We've taken away that isolation. The elephant in the room is the isolated entrepreneur. Now, African entrepreneurs, you have no excuse. You have 4,470 people plus your mentors that you can call on for support. Since the launch of the program in, in January 2014, in 2015, as I've said, we've empowered 4,470 entrepreneurs with the skills, the networks, the mindset, and the values. Remember, our value is Afri-capitalism. So we believe um, that our African entrepreneurs can do good and do well at the same time. For us, it's really important that entrepreneurs make money, they generate wealth for their continent, for our continent. Now, by the way, Africa is my continent. Um, that they generate wealth, that we generate wealth, and that we create jobs through our enterprises. I do not believe in this notion that the, um, the, the demographic of Africa is a doom, doom waiting, waiting to explode. To explode. It, is it is an extraordinary, extraordinary energy. energy. It, it, the human capital is, what is, is Africa's biggest asset. And what Mr. Alumalu has done by investing $100 million over the next 10 years is helping us to harness that extraordinary human capital. Our program this morning, we went through um, the, extra the really rigorous selection process that we put in place right at the start of the program. Um, I will not bore you. Go read on our website, www.tonyilumilufoundation.org, and you will see just precisely um, the process that we go through in order to select the top 1,000 entrepreneur. Our program is technology driven and technology based. And the, one of the amazing things that the foundation has done is that it's been in the forefront of technology innovation. Our program has evolved from being a technology based to a technology driven program. In 2015, when we launched the program, we rented third party platforms from the UK and US. That for me was very painful because that was capital flight going out of Africa into the hands of America and Europe. By 2017, we built our own platforms for application portal, for the mentor learning platform, for the document management system, and above all, for the alumni engage engagement. So you can remain connected as alumni, not just within your own countries, but also across the African um, continent. And you know what? The amazing thing is we didn't outsource it to China or to my country of origin, India. We employed Nigerian developers, coders, to build those platforms. 
because we believe it's really important for entrepreneurs to thrive that we keep the value chain and the supply chain of the free sector, sector in, the, in continent the continent because it, it, is, it is in the supply, supply chain, chain where entrepreneurs that are sitting here and, and everyone across the continent that is where they make the impact that is where job creation is that is where wealth creation is my god okay the story hasn't finished yet okay so you know i mean like in the first year we had 20000 registered in 2019 we had 22000 216000 registered so over the four years and this is our fifth year we've amassed an extraordinary database for us the entrepreneur is the heart of the program um, we don't talk on behalf of the entrepreneurs. We don't develop policy on behalf of the entrepreneurs. We de and we don't um, deliver policy down from, from up, down for the entrepreneurs. We work with the entrepreneurs to help us develop and devise that policy. So data analysis and insights has become a really important part of the foundation's work. We never imagined that we would amass this kind of data. We have, and we've used the foundation's data, access to that unique data and the trends to produce really relevant, focused research and targeted advocacy. Yes, we're running the program, but we're also impacting policy. And we're also advocating across the continent to our governments, um, to our donor agencies, development agencies, to anybody who dares to listen and cares to listen um, in terms of how they can begin to build a more enabling environment for entrepreneurs, but certainly for our, the Tony Anumlu entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs and SMEs across the African continent. So now we have over 950,000 connections with entrepreneurs from around the continent. That is the data to die for. This, is, this access to unique data represents a dynamic gateway for TEF to produce case studies, research reports, and really support our development agencies as they begin to shift their mind to seeing entrepreneurship as a solution to many of the challenges. And you, again, you can read all of our reports that we've published, and, may, and we will continue to publish on our website. I just want to refer back to the to um, to really on our technology innovation. So not only have we built our own platforms, but in 2018, Mr. Olumulu um, tasked us to build Africa's largest digital platform. He said it's not enough to begin to support the entrepreneurs that are coming to our platform. Remember his institutionalizing luck, democratizing opportunity. What about the hundreds of thousands who come to our portal and don't get selected? How can we basically begin to share the knowledge and information and make it available to the entire African continent, to the entire African entrepreneurship ecosystem? And so we launched in October 2018 at the TEF Entrepreneurship Forum, TEF Connect. You can now go and enter on, that, on, on our digital platform. It brings entrepreneurs from Africa, but also from around the world who are looking to Africa. Because remember, Africa is the future. Africa is rising. And they're looking at the best way to understand an emerging continent, an emerging country, is through the entrepreneurs. Um, the um, TEF, TEF Connect, Connect is, is literally providing, facilitating knowledge exchange. It's, for, it's, it's, for, it's, it's a place where our alumni and our mentors can engage. It's where our alumni and entrepreneurs can really market their products and services. Already since, since we launched in, in March 20, uh, in uh, October 2018, um, we've registered over half a million people, entrepreneurs, organizations, and institutions have registered on our platform. The website is www.tefconnect.com. We invite all of you to join. The 12-week enterprise toolkit has been dubbed as the mini-MBA. 
And again, Mr. Olumalu tasked us, how can we make this extraordinary 12 modules available to all those who apply but don't get selected for the program? Just because you don't get selected, it doesn't mean to see, say your business idea is not relevant. I'm delighted to say that last year we've made that 12-week enterprise toolkit available free to everyone, not just in the African continent, but the entire world. And already over 1,600 have registered and are going through those 12 modules. Um, the alumni who are in the room will know exactly what a tough challenging program it is but also what an amazing how it really enables you to go from an idea to launching a business at the end of those 12 weeks um, over the, we, in, certainly in 2017 and 2018, we've welcomed partners. In the first year, second year, we were ourselves a startup, remember. Nobody had ever taken and done something like this, this crazy good idea of connecting the entire African continent. And so we were, so in 2017, we began to say, you know, we have a, a program, a platform that is tried and tested. Partners, come and join. Come and leverage this program. Come and support additional entrepreneurs um, and in, in addition to the 1,000 that we're already doing. Last year, as a result of the, our partnership with GIZ, a German development agency, UNDP, the International Red Cross, and, and, and several others, we were able to sponsor 470 additional entrepreneurs. You will hear when we announce the 2019 cohort and you'll be blown away by the number that we will be announcing for 2019, 2019 um, TEF selection. That, those strategic partnerships are important um, in terms of scaling because from the very start of the program, we had ambition that our program would scale and impact much more than the 1,000 we, we, um, we set out to do. I invite you all to put in your diary the July the 26th to the 27th for our fifth TEF Entrepreneurship Forum that will take place actually in this very venue in Abuja um, this year. There you are. <laughs> I really want to take a moment to have thanked our mentors. I want to thank you, the entrepreneurs and our alumni, right? You, the alumni, have been extraordinary. We have gave them the tools, the skills, the mentoring, um, the network, and the seed capital. We, think, we thought that they would say, thank you, bye-bye, see you around. I'm, we are so proud of their, you know, their desire to give back because of what they received. So our application drives every year are a success. The numbers are increasing because across the 54 African countries, we have Tony Alumlu Entrepreneur Alumni. And they totally dedicate themselves to really promoting and, and, and really spreading the message of the Tony Lumalu, the application portal is open. You need help with how to, uh, you know, take, let me, uh, I can help you take you through the application form because I know how hard it is. So they help us drive our application drives. We've actually built over 57 hub leads or appointed 57 hub leads. So the foundation has an extraordinary virtual presence across 54 African countries. Mr. Alumalu is relentless about traveling across the African continent and meeting with the local alumni everywhere he goes. Our alumni team, amazing alumni team, there's only two of them um, in the foundation, they've launched the, the entrepreneurship TEF Entrepreneurship Awards, a number of our entrepreneurs have won the awards. They've launched a TEF pitch competition, a marketplace as part of the forum. And they're constantly bringing value-add partners to, to support 
our alumni and to support our entrepreneurs. I think, I'm, if I may, I could be now trying to conclude this, um, um, this welcome address. You know, it, I guess, you know, I mean, if I was discussing with my husband last night, what's the one word that can really sum up the experience of the last five years? And the word I landed on was transformation. Over the last five years, with a commitment by this one Nigerian private sector leader to commit $100 million of his family wealth, the, you know, he has transformed. There's been the transformation of a foundation that started in 2010 um, and that I joined in 2014. Um, it, you know, the work of the small team the small but mighty team, as I call, um, the, the, the TEF team that I've led over the last five years, is their dedication, their commitment, their hard work that has delivered what it has. The foundation's transformation is also the foundation. Can I continue? Should I continue? <laughs> We have amazing dignity. Let us rise. Thank you. I'm the MC. of Nigeria. Please, round of applause for Her Excellency. This is Aisha Muhammad Ubuari. Thank you. She is also accompanied by the Kogi State Governor's wife, Her Excellency Rashida Bellu. And is also accompanied by the Nasarawa State Governor's wife, Her Excellency Myro Almakura. Thank you. And we'll also like to recognize the presence of His Royal Highness King Ebitimi Banigo. Oh, wow. Thank you, sir. Okay. And then all protocols duly observed. And now, of course, Madam Vir, the floor is yours. Thank you. This is how things are done in Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> Um, Your Excellency, I am so delighted, First Lady of Nigeria, that you are here. We want to present to you entrepreneurs, Nigerian entrepreneurs. You have problems, they have solutions. They are your private sector. They are your engine, First Lady of Nigeria, who are going to drive this continent, this country first. It's a, it's a country with the largest population on the continent. It's a country with the youngest demographic. It's a country with the most educated um, um, population on the continent. And above all, it's a country which is, 
which in where the young people and old people like me, by the way, entrepreneurs, where the entrepreneurial, the, it's in their DNA. Entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial the, is in their DNA. We invite you to harness that energy. We have given, we have developed a platform from which they have been able to acquire the skills, their capacity building, um, their networks with each other across 37 states. There is not a single state in Nigeria where we do not have Nigerian entrepreneurs who are participating in our program. And I was just to say in concluding, we've been sharing really what we have done over the last five years, and, and you will be amazed as to what it is that we will reveal in terms of the 2019 selected entrepreneurs. Every year, as you know, we select 1,000 entrepreneurs, but I will leave that surprise. But I was, I was just saying that in my five years, what is the one word that can really um, it captured what these five years has been about, and the word is transformation. In my five years that I've been here in your amazing country, um, the word that I have seen and experienced is transformation. The transformation of the Tony Elumalu Foundation from how I found it in April 2014 when I joined to how we transformed it to what it is today. It is the foundation that is leading Africa's um, entrepreneurship development through the seven pillars. Institutionalizing luck, democratizing opportunity. It's in the forefront, it's a foundation that's in the forefront of technology innovation. It is the foundation that is now the thought leader on African entrepreneurs across the continent but also across the world. Um, but it's also the foundation transformation as a part of the transformation of Africa is what I have witnessed. We have been, our entrepreneurs are bring, bringing new models for development led by Africans, led by uh, the African private sector leader, leaders, working absolutely in partnership with our amazing government leaders. It is a foundation that has really pushed for trade and not aid. This is what our founder, Mr. Tony Alumalu, um, practices and preaches. It is a foundation that's been founded on Afri-capitalism, that it is the African private sector leaders working in partnership because, as he says, the government cannot solve all the problems. The private sector leaders have a role to play. Your African business leaders are investing in Africa and not taking their capital outside of Africa. As someone who has worked in the arts, media, and culture, I have seen the African arts and culture explode across the world in music, in fashion, in visual art, and in the film industry. I have lived through two elections in Nigeria, and I have witnessed how Africans have embraced democracy and made it your own. Um, I have seen the emergence of African young, young African leaders. That is the transformation that the Tony Lumalu Foundation has made a contribution to. Of course, there's been my own personal transformation, and I leave this, I mean, I'm not leaving, I'm transferring or transforming, I um, leave um, the world, you know, my worldview totally transformed. I had always worked in Africa before as a storyteller. The other thing that I witness is the transformation of Mr. Alumalu, this extraordinary visionary leader, and I want to pay tribute to him and, and, and really share that. Am I allowed to do that? Can I continue? Okay. So all these transformations, I believe, have been made possible by Mr. Alumalu. Working with him, I witness his own transformation from a businessman to a statesman and a leading philanthropist who is known not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but on the global stage. He is relentless. 
He is relentless in taking the African story. It's so much nicer to hear the African story coming from one of our amazing role models from across. Transformation is at the, heart, at the heart of a good storytelling, which for many of us in the film industry and in Hollywood is epitomized in the storytelling guru, Joseph Campbell, and his idea of a hero's journey. I'd like to share a thought from him which goes to the heart of what he calls the hero's journey. A legendary hero is usually the founder of something, and I insert the Tony Alumalu Foundation. The founder of a new age, the founder of a new city, the founder of a new way of life. To found something new, one must leave the old and go on a quest, go on a quest of a seed idea the Tony Lumlu Entrepreneurship Program, a, ge a germinal idea that will have the potential of bringing forth something new. 4,470 Tony Lumlu Entrepreneurs and an phil economic philosophy of Afri capitalism. Um, so entrepreneurs, with your, the First Lady of Nigeria in your presence, you are the transformation with your ideas, passion, and impacting lives. The social and economic transformation of Africa is in your hands. As Mr. Olumulu has often said, only we can transform Africa. I am African. Like Mr. Olumulu's heroes, you know each step of the journey consists of risks, tests, and challenges. To support this journey, the foundation has given you, the entrepreneurs, the tools, the networks, the mentors, the funding, but we all know that every hero is solely responsible for their fate. That is your business and ultimately the future of Africa. Always stay connected to your passion, and if you find yourself excited, intimidated, and challenged as I did when I arrived in Nigeria in April 2014, all at the same time, then you know you're in the right place. I welcome, welcome you all to the 2019 selection announcement process. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam Vera. Oh, you know, I still need you. You can't leave just yet. You cannot. That was a very rousing speech. Please, one more round of applause for Madam Vera. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been uh, quite uh, some years of transformation. Please, for our alumni in the room, please show by a raise of hands. Let's see how many have been transformed as well. Look, wow. that is good. Round of applause because you are the future of African business. Thank you, thank you. And then one last question. I know, I know. I need you for the next segment as well, but I need to find out just how complete your transformation is. Yes, you're Nigerian. Do you have uh, your Nigerian name yet? Because we've been uh, polling. We have some names for you. Yes. Do you have any yet? Not yet, right? Perfect. We have the perfect name for her. Because of your work, in the country and across the continent, we like to call you Amaka. Oh my God. Yes, it means beautiful. Oh, thank you, Ma. Yes. So from now on, she is now oh Madam. Yes, Otpaminda Amaka Ver. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. All right, so the transformation is now complete, and we'll be moving on to our documentary section, where we're also going to witness some of the transformation that has taken, uh, taken place. So, Madam Amaka will do the honors. Oh my God, you Thank won't you. let me off the stage. No, huh? not at all. Okay, guys, I mean, I'm going to make this like 30 seconds. People can say to me, what's been the impact of your program? You know, you can do monitoring and evaluation. You can track. You know, entrepreneurs are not terrorists, so please don't track them. Um, you know, you can track, yeah? I mean, they should be tracking themselves. I'm a storyteller, yeah? And for me, it's the stories, the transformation of anybody and everybody is in the journey. And you can't capture that in just 
monitoring and evaluation. So to my dear friends in the development world, embrace storytelling as part of your monitoring and evaluation. It's not just numbers, it's the experience, it's the journey, it's the transformation of an entrepreneur who applied in 2017 um, as a social enterprise. 2018, he saw an ad for Google Impact Challenge which was the top prize was 250,000. The second prize was $125,000. And in 2018, in November, his friends were saying, no, don't bother applying. You're too small. This is for big people. He applied anyway. And he is here. I wonder if he's here. Um, he applied anyway. And you're not going to believe this, but two Tony Illumilu entrepreneurs on that night walked away with $500,000. That is transformation. That is stories. And if you want to know more stories like that, go visit our website. We have 500 alumni stories. We produce the TEF audio stories. We invite two or three entrepreneurs to share their entrepreneurial journeys. Because entrepreneurs learn from other entrepreneurs' successes and failures. For us as entrepreneurs, there's no such thing as a failure. It's just an, uh, you know, it's just an opportunity to learn and pivot. So in 2018, everybody kept asking us, so what's been the impact? And there was a journalist who asked that this morning, and I hope he's in the audience. Here are 12 entrepreneurs that we interviewed in their business locations. I ask you to put your Blackberries and your mobile phones, switch them off, and really, um, really give your 100% attention and energy as you listen to these 12 entrepreneurs and their journey from 2015 to 2017. Empowering African Entrepreneurs, a short film of the, is a, is, um, the impact um, of the program on these entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. And we have some of the entrepreneurs who are featured in the document. In 2016, I was lost. I didn't know where I was heading to. But when I saw this ad about the Tony Illumilu Foundation, and I applied. That was the pivotal moment. The seed from the Tony Illumilu Foundation is the bedrock all our sources is sitting on. When the Tony Illumilu Foundation found me, I was small. If the foundation had just given me this money without taking me through the mentoring program, maybe it would have this business was still be an idea. Africa is a land of opportunities. There's no better time to be and become an entrepreneur in Africa. The government is to set the right environment, but the private sector must take lead and take charge. Having been an entrepreneur myself, let me help to create more. That is all driving force behind the Tony Elmelo Foundation. Through the Tony Elmelo Entrepreneurship Program, I am committing 100 million US dollars to support the next generation of African entrepreneurs. The program represents a decade-long commitment to support 10,000 African entrepreneurs and startups. The program is open to entrepreneurs from all 54 African countries. Over the next 10 years, our goal is to generate a million jobs through these 10,000 businesses and to help contribute at least $10 billion to revenues across Africa through these businesses. What we need to do is to democratize luck. We're not targeting any sector. We just want people who believe in themselves, who have ideas that can develop the continent. And so that was what drove us. Welcome to Aerial Industries. This is our flight site and our test facility. This is where we believe that we are about to revolutionize not only agriculture in Africa as we know it today, but the aviation industry. 
Our focus being in agriculture doesn't mean that we are not also interested in other fields. So we now also teach how to use and operate drones here. The inspiration behind my business came out when I had my daughter. I had her in London and it was very, very expensive to buy her furniture. And I brought it back to Nigeria thinking that oh, it would be a walk in the park to clear to customs. And with customs, I heard that furniture was contraband. So I had to pay an extra 250000 naira to actually clear the furniture. And I thought about it. I said, why can't I actually even buy furniture in Nigeria? So I, I did my research in you know, to my business partner. So we said, okay, you know what, let's try and see how we can start doing this as a business. We use drones to monitor different things like infrastructure, which encapsulates roads, bridges, um, land surveying, um, disaster response. So we track, we track building construction, and we give you the confidence that what you're paying for is what's happening. What Safi intends to do is to bridge the gap of sanitation, and uh, we have. Um, a modern technology, um, which is a green toilet, and we intend to roll this out in the market and specifically target schools. And the whole idea is to face out the methods of waste management within schools, that is, use of food latrines. My inspiration comes actually from mostly from the fabrics and then also my clients. My designs are uh, mostly simple. I'm, I try to maintain the colors that are on the fabric that I'm working with. I don't like things that are too busy and just very classy, simple, nice uh, wares. I started Mama Money due to my personal experience as a young girl with a widowed mother. So feeding in the house was a very big challenge for us. My mother was a full-time housewife. She had no skill and no income. So there was basically no fund in the house. So we had to go begging sometimes um, family, friends to give us money to feed. So with all this experience, I said to myself, no child deserves to go through what we did myself and my siblings so i decided to start investing in women like my mother so that we can, when they have money in their hands they're able to educate their children they're able to feed their children my inspiration for setting up cafe blendia started when grandma started having diabetes crisis and i started wondering you know we have to give her vitamin to drink so i was wondering excuse me does it mean that if you're sick you have to always eat medicine I don't know nice tasting foods that people can eat and still stay healthy. I started doing research and I fell in love with what I got researching about tiger nuts. And that was what I picked it up from there. My brand is for the by Nani. It's a brand for the women who want something different and want to be able to be in a space and be presented as themselves and not just a counterfeit or like a replication. I came up with it because I wanted women when you come in, get something that you feel is new, that is authentic, that has a, an African feel to it. People can also get good stuff here in Africa, then they can get it all over the world. So that people can be coming to us to get the stuff, not us going to them to get the stuff. When I have a broken down very I assist my own car, I know what's wrong, I know that, oh, if my car is behaving this way, I know why. If I perceive a smell, I know where the smell is coming from, I would know how to fix it. And presently, what I'm doing is encouraging other women. I have a program called Things on Wheels. What we do is that we teach women basic preventive maintenance. We let them know about their cars, what they should check in the morning before they leave the house, how often they should service their car, what they should do. So if I'm running such a program, I should be able to do the basic research on my own vehicle. In Uganda now and in Africa, governments no longer are creating enough jobs. And now the opportunity in Africa is in, uh, is in uh, agribusiness. And yet our education system uh, trained us to seek white collar jobs. So ever since I started my project uh, after the Tony El Nero Foundation, I've recruited young men whom I recruit and take on my model farm and demonstration. Mm -hmm. I train them right from nursery bed preparation through the life cycle of the crop. So in three months, when they sell, I believe they would have got the skill and the knowledge to begin on, themse on themselves. Then I graduate them, they can begin. I can assure you, it's marvelous when you say the mindset change I came among the youth in my region.
among the youth in Uganda, it's magical. As a foundation, we invested so much in building huge training online training facility, which we use to train our entrepreneurs 12 weeks in a year. We can open this up to as many as the world is ready to support. And then at the end of training, they are certified and we give them $5,000 to support them to take up. Why I have so much um, love for the foundation because I was just coming into entrepreneurship and the 12 week training explains me to how I can really run my business. Even as me having the technical skills, I also need the entrepreneurial skills to be able to run a profitable business. For me, the program the most impacted was the training, which was, well, it was really tough, but it was also amazing. It has made me look at my business in a deeper level than what I used to. And I'm now I'm able to start seeing what's important and what is wasting a lot of time, yet it's not bringing in any other money or making the, an, the, an impact. Um, what really stood out for me was the learning material and uh, basically the, the, the 12 week program and, and very, very specifically um, the legal aspects of the, of the program. It's something I've never really thought through critically in my business and in my previous times of setting up a business I'd exposed myself to legal risks and I'd lost my, um, I think three times I'd lost my businesses. Hello, thank you David Chair for the transformation of the local and the foundation now. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de capital de, euh, financier pour me euh, lancer réellement. Alors la fondation Tumelumelu m'a fait deux, deux opportunités. D'abord c'est la formation, le bout de semaine de cours, 